morning everybody, Jason Dodge, Hollis Farms. A little cool this morning and I am just about running a little bit late. Uh, I guess if you want to call it late, it's not late for me. It seems like I usually in the mornings I'm getting in there just right about daylight. I'm very seldom going to be there that hour before daylight or anything. Drink of the Dr. Pepper for my back. It's sore. I don't know what's wrong with it. Unless I've been walking too much with uh, all this mess on my back. But anyway, I think what I'm gonna do this morning is grab my stuff and run it up, run in there and get in uh, one of the long wool fibers that we put up yesterday. And I think the wind's gonna be perfect for the one I'm going to. But see what we can see. I believe it's going to be a good morning. It's going to be a little breeze, but pretty much mostly steel. But it's going to stay a little cool all day. Not going to warm up too bad, I don't think. Maybe they'll move. We'll see what happens. What are you doing, Dutch? Hmm. What are you doing? All right, y'all, not just a whole lot of action this morning, but I tell you, I did enjoy sitting in that climber and just sitting instead of kind of hanging from the saddle so much, even though I do like the saddle. But that was fun just to walk in with my <clears throat> backpack and just climb up. But I had uh, ended up seeing four, it was three grown does and one little and and uh, let's see, I had a shot at three of them. I had one just come right up under me at about five yards from the tree. That was fun. And it's so tight and thick in there. Got my bow in my lap pretty much the whole time. And I know I didn't. I don't know how the, I don't even know if I had any of them deer on film. But it's just the way I'm trying to hunt, it's just most of the time, it's just so tight and thick in there. It's going to be hard to film, period. But anyway, we had a good time. Uh, I'm back working on my aiders. I may hang this stand this afternoon. I'm not sure, but uh, uh, they're going they're gonna to work fine. I think I got some, got to dig in here. I think I got enough bolts to, to put two more on, and then we'll be done with the aider situation. All right, y'all, so I had to do something just a little bit different than what this stand's made for. I first started, you know, the, the steps lock together right here. And when I put these aiders on here, the way, this is the way they go on there, and they're, they're kind of sticking up. And uh, it wouldn't go down in the groove to lock. So I bent two of them down, still wouldn't go. So they're just not made for it. So we just kind of had to modify things a little bit. And I may can fix that later, but for now, I just put, I lock this one, the first one will lock. And I just put one on this side, one on this side, and put a bungee cord. I think that'll be fine, and I think I'll just probably take my pack and hang it or something. I'm not sure yet, but that thing's pretty light. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I may set that thing up and hunt out of it this afternoon. All right, y'all. I think I have my stand situation done. I think I am going to go. Uh, I'm going to go look around here for just a little bit. I'm going to try to go in just a little bit early this afternoon so I can take my time putting it up. It's been so long since I uh, put a hang-on type stand up. They take me a few extra minutes. But I think I'm going to go ahead and carry three sticks with me. Take my time and kind of see see where we can get with that. Because I'm not sure with just the one step later on it what we can do. But it's a pretty day. I bet you they move, but I bet it's going to be pretty late. But I may be wrong, but we're going to try to be there anyway. All right, y'all got rounded up. Got about three hours before dark. I got my XOP hang on stand. And 
three sticks in my pack. A little bit heavier than what I want to deal with, but I know before too long I'm going to be getting a lighter system that's basically the same thing but lighter they're just out of stock right now so i want to get used to using it get everything feeling filled out so we're gonna get in here and ease on in here and get hung up see what we can see
Alright y'all, me and Dodge made it out. I'm going to start from the beginning on this one. This was an awesome, awesome hunt that didn't end good. But, all you can do is learn from your, st your mistakes. But anyway, so I grab, I get my aiders and all that stuff done on my new XOP sticks and I said, and then, like I said, I had a climber. Oh, I wasn't, not... 35 40 yards from where I was in the hang on but it was uh it was on the wind was wrong for the side of the trail so I said well it was a good time to try this thing out so get everything on there and kind of get packed up and all and everything's pretty good it's, it's a little heavier than what I want to fool with and I'm gonna fix that before it's over with but uh I, I like how everything went together but I get there and I'm, well, I actually, I get off the ranger and I'm walking, I said, I forgot my pull-up rope. My climbers have ropes on them, and I really didn't want to put a rope on this, and I was just going to use my hoist that I've been using with uh, my uh, saddle, but I forgot to get it. But it is in my backpack now. And on the back of my, uh, that's the fun part about this new stuff, new gear you get is, figuring it out I know it can be aggravating but where I'm at in my life and my hunting it's fun to me but anyway I had a there's a buckle on the back of my uh, rock climbing harness that I didn't I knew it was there but I never noticed it because I hadn't had nothing of a back my backpack on well when I put the stand on it rattled so I had to walk in there kind of holding it but when I got back to the truck a while ago I fixed that put some tape on it but anyway so I had to make a couple of extra trips up the tree to uh, put the stand up because I ended up having to take some of those rubber gear tires and tie my bow to, the, to my backpack to get up there. All that worked fine, staying solid. It's been a long time since I, well last year, but I didn't do it a lot. But um, this is the first year in probably, shoot, a lot of years since I've, gotten this serious with the bow hunting and not picked up a rifle. I used to do it all the time. High school, after high school and all, I never hardly picked up a gun. Uh, but anyway, I, I just, I'm bound and determined. And, but anyway, got in there, camera, I really liked filming with the camera arm coming out beside me uh, on the tree like that. And I'm probably with those three sticks and it's just a single step eight or not a two step eight, I probably was, I don't know, 12 to 14 feet to my platform, which I mean, I, for years it bothered me, but getting this wind right and all, and I was sitting up there in this red shirt till the first group of deer went by at five or 10 yards. And that one buck that I, I didn't get him on film till later, but he walked by at 10 yards and could have smoked him, but He's a, he's all my he's really a call but I just I said I ain't gonna shoot him if I can't get him on film but anyway everything was perfect oh uh, 
like filming like that. I'm kind of filming the, with my eyes and my bifocals and looking at the viewfinder. It, it works pretty good like it is up there close to maybe shoulder height or whatever sitting down. But anyway, and I fixed the deal that, that's holding my bow. I'm, I, I'm sitting so low to the ground and I, I can't see real far. I didn't want my bow hung up behind me. And I, I may get one of them hangers that uh, sticks out longer from the tree right in front of you, but it's just more weight, and I'm trying to stay away from the weight. But I, I fixed a thing this morning sitting in the stand uh, on my uh, on the steel loop on my rock climbing harness. I'll show you all that one day. It's pretty cool. It just it, it holds your bow just sitting in your lap, hands free. But took a gear tire and did it. No big deal, but it works. Uh, but anyway, the... Uh, that group of does and little ones came through. I'm not sure. I can't even remember how many deer I saw. I just had to sit back and think. Most of them came in behind me. The big the uh, big deer came in front of me. That's what I was planning. And, I mean, this thing come together just, I mean, it couldn't have been planned no better. And uh, But most of the deer came behind me, and I just kind of had to sit there. And they finally, that uh, coal boat looking thing kind of pushed them by me. And... Uh, they got on the buck, kind of went through the cut, cut up the uh, pines, the thicket, and then he come back out. And then I noticed the does kind of run run off in the edge, and I saw them. Not spooked like me spooking them, but like a deer pushed them, like that buck was pushing them. And I said, man, I thought he had left. And about that time, I saw that big body thing and them horns come, and I said, mm-hmm. I had a, got a picture of that deer. Uh, I have gotten one before, I'm pretty sure it's him, but just a big old mature, of course I didn't have no binoculars, didn't take time to zoom or nothing, I was just trying to get a shot, and I'm pretty sure it's, uh, he's a big mature deer, I think he's just an eight point, but I'm talking about a stud of an eight point, and uh, I mean, I set that climber up the other day for a northwest wind, right 15 yards from that scrape, that he stopped in broadside to me. And uh, William was out of the northeast today, so I was on the on the uh, west side of him and worked out perfect. Uh, there was a spike behind him that I didn't realize was there till I kind of picked my bow up and I was kind of moving the camera. He was looking right at me. That's what got me messed up and I shouldn't have done it. I ain't making excuses at all because Buddy, I'm going to tell you, it don't matter how long you do it, it bow hunting, it, it ain't over till it's over. But anyway, the deer wasn't but about 25 yards. Really and truthfully, a chip shot. I do it at a target all day long. But anyway, I drew back, and, and I know what I'm doing. I know what I did on that doe the other day, and I know what I'm doing. I've got to figure out how to fix it. I have got to walk myself through it. Uh, in my head before I pull the trigger. Uh, I used to be, I, years, I'm telling you, I used to be good at it, but boy, I am struggling right now. I am struggling. I mean, we've been getting in some awesome setups. I, we ain't hardly sat without having a deer within range. I mean, we've been, we've been playing the wind right. We ain't hardly been over 15 feet. It's just been an it's been fun and awesome, I'm telling you. I ain't got to kill one, but I am aggravated over this one because that was a good deer. I'm laughing right now. If he'd have been the biggest thing I'd ever seen before, I'd be puking, but I'm just proud I clean missed him. The, the, uh, I, ain't, I know I didn't make a good shot, but I'm gonna tell y'all something I noticed. When I got out there to my arrow, it was kicked off to the side from where he was and stuck in the ground at an angle. I don't know if I hit a limb or not. <clears throat> but I knew when I released, it probably was a blessing if it hit a limb, because I knew when I released, it was not a good shot. I can, here's what I've been remembering, and any time I've killed a deer with my bow in the past, uh, rifle too, really, uh, I remember, especially with a bow, of course you can't see a bullet hit a deer, uh, but I, I always remember watching that arrow hit them. And I've told y'all on the last two, I don't remember the arrow. And that's, that's where I'm messing up. I remember seeing my pins. 
I remember knowing he's at 25 yards. And I'm telling y'all this in case somebody's new bow hunting or old to bow hunting, it can happen to anybody. Yeah, I was pretty shook up, but I, I what they do tear me up. If they quit tearing me up, um, when you know you're finna shoot, that's when it really happens to me. And I can really get worse tore up after I know I've hit one. I didn't feel good about the shot today. It didn't bother me that bad. I was more pissed off, but uh, you just know. I mean, I I go back to I saw my sight with all them pins in it all the years years ago i never had nothing but one pin and it was set on 20 yards and if it was i'm not one to shoot and i, I told myself i wasn't going to shoot nothing over 20 yards and because when you do a lot of time me I, I get in a mess but i ain't as good a shot as a lot of people and or whatever but anyway uh I, the spike got me boogered up, but anyway, I still should have made the shot. I'm thinking about pulling all them daggum pins off of it where I ain't got but one. But but back to the final part of the deal. I could see my sight, and I remember seeing all the pins, and they were, you know, they pretty much, when they get out there, I mean, they're pretty much, they're so tight, these bows are so fast, they're all on the deer. Uh, and that's the last thing I remember. Uh, I'm surprised I didn't hit him in his horns because that's probably what I was looking at. Usually when you mess up, that's what you're looking at. But you got to, got to, got, I know I'm saying this, but I know how to do it. I've just not got, I'm just not right. Something's messed up in this head right now. But anyway, you have got, to, and I, this is how I've been teaching Cody to shoot and he's getting better at it. You can't shoot at the deer. And, and I really learned this from listening and watching to a, a lot of people that shoot instinctive with a recurve or longbow or compound, whatever, that do not use the arrow for reference or anything that they just, you've got to pick a hair. And I've been telling Cody on that target, there's different spots on it. I say, you pick the smallest spot and that's where you put your pin. And I know you, you aim small, miss small. And I ain't been aiming small. I can just tell you. I'm going to mess up all year if I don't tighten up. Cause, but, boy, I've been, I'm happy. We've been putting some setups down. Now. We've been getting some shots. But anyway, um, that is what I've got to do. I have got to finish it. We're getting it all done. We've been working hard at it and hustling, hanging different trees sets every time we go and just about i don't think i've sat in the same tree more than twice all year uh, but you've got to finish it all the way to the end i mean i did it on the doe i wasn't no more really shook up on her than i was this buck not really because when it gets down to that last second where you know you've been a draw that's when it gets me whether it be a doe or a buck or whatever but i'm either going I may pull all them pins off and just just put my just leave my 20 on there. I like the option of all them, but I, I I just don't think I need that. I think I need to get back to that one pin at 20 yards and let's don't shoot. I mean 25 I don't mind like that deer was today. Uh, I just, I need to put one pin on it. Now, the deer we killed this year was at 40. I ranged him, and I remember putting it dead on him. He was quartering hard away, and it run all the way up through there. But I remember, I remember putting it on him, and I did not, I don't, I remember seeing the pins this afternoon, but I didn't pick a spot. I did not pick a hair to put that pin on him. That's why I screwed up. I'm just proud, I, and at the doe that I knocked down that we didn't find, same thing, same doggone thing. And it ain't the bow, it ain't the equipment, it's Jason. But I'm gonna figure it out. I thought while well, I think to myself while well, ago, I'm gonna stick with this thing. Oh, I'm gonna stick with this bow. A lot of times used to, I'd get a little aggravated and I'd pick my rifle up, but bow hunting like this, I think it makes me a better hunter, it makes me hustle harder and you earn it 
Oh, I smell skunk. Oh, uh, and I'm gonna stick with it. I've got enough pictures, enough hit list deer that uh, that was that was one of the better ones that I've got. I hadn't got a really stud yet, but uh, that was one of my better ones that I he lived to went on the wall. But I mean, you, all that's going through your head. You just got to once you. I mean, I saw when I first saw him, I knew he was mature deer. Wasn't sure about his rack. And we're gonna shoot five year old plus deer down there and uh, knew he was that. I should have just never looked at his horns. I, only, I should have seen his horns when I found him dead is what I should have done. And I just messed up. Rookie mistake. But that's the fun part about bow hunting is I don't care how long you've done it. It's, if it don't shake you up a little bit or you mess up or something, uh, probably need to quit. But uh, I probably will if it don't continue. I just gotta learn to control it better. Uh, golly, I love it. That was that was about as good a hunt as you could ask for. And I planned. I mean, I planned for. I when I put that, I, I knew there was a one scrape under me, and I didn't see that big scrape over there that he was in when I shot till I was hanging that climber the other day. And I, I mean. I said, this is where I want to kill this deer, right here in this scrape. And I have seen several deer hit them scrapes lately. And I just screwed the pooch. But anyway, all we can do is learn from them and keep trying to get better. I'm on, I'm on plan on keep. I ain't saying I ain't going to get my gun out at all, but I'm planning right now not to. And just, if it rains or something, I just need to either get the crossbow out or just do like we did whenever it was yesterday.